Hi, and welcome to another video here on my channel, UiPath with Yebe. Today, we're looking at how we can automate a remote machine using a remote desktop connection. Now, before we get started, please remember to subscribe to my channel. Um, and also, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And also, if you have any questions or requests for, for videos, make sure you leave them in the comments below. I do try to answer all questions. Sometimes it takes a while, but I'll eventually get around to it. But let's start automating a remote desktop machine. So usually when we automate something, we have a machine called a robot machine. And typically that robot automates something that is sitting on the same machine, on the local machine. But sometimes, and increasingly I would say, we have a need to automate something that is on another machine. And for now we'll call that the application machine because it has an application on it. And that machine could be in the next room or it could be in a completely different location. Either way, when automating it, we want to connect to it somehow. And a typical way of connecting to remote machines is using remote desktop from Microsoft. The problem for our robot when connecting to a remote machine is that it can only see what is on the local machine. It relies either on image recognition or on something like computer vision. And while computer vision is getting better literally by the day, it's just not my favorite way of doing things and it's not the most stable. Now, when compared to running local automations, what the robot can't do when running an automation on a remote machine is talk to the applications through the Windows operating system. And that's a big disadvantage because that's how the robot knows how to both build selectors when you're in studio, but also how to execute automations on those selectors at runtime. So in order to fix that, UiPath did something pretty clever. They built something called the UiPath Remote Runtime. Now the UiPath Remote Runtime is a small application that you install on the application machine, the remote machine, and that communicates with the robot machine by installing something on the local machine called the UiPath Remote Extension. And when you have both of these installed and you connect to a remote machine using remote desktop, you have two-way communication. So when you are in studio and developing your automation, you will be able to build selectors as if you were automating something on the local machine. And at runtime, the same is true. The robot can simply communicate with the application as if they lived on the same machine. This uh, communication layer, if you will, that UiPath has created makes that communication completely transparent to us as developers and at runtime as well. So let's try and set that up on my machine. Okay, so we're inside Studio and I'll just go into the main workflow of our automation. And then I'll just drag a click event into my uh, canvas here. And then I'll want to indicate something on screen that I want to click on. Now, to start with, I want to just do it here on my local machine. So I'll start up Calculator indicate on screen. And as soon as I do that, you can see that I'm able to click the four, five, six button, whatever I want to click and generate a selector by doing so. That's just how we normally do things. Now, if I delete this again and close my calculator and then instead establish a connection to my remote desktop machine that we have here. And on that remote desktop machine, I'll start, start up calculator just the same. like that. And we then add a click activity to our automation again, indicate on screen. You'll see here that I'm not able to click the four, five, six buttons in the calculator. In fact, I'm only able to click the entire window. And it says on the screen that there's a remote communication error and I need to click for more information. Now, this is what I was talking about in the slide deck. If you click this, you'll see that it says that I need to install the UiPath extension for Windows Remote Desktop. That's on the local machine. And then it says as a note that the UiPath Remote Runtime must also be installed on the server machine. So let's do these things. So first we'll install this extension here on the local machine. I'll just click Install, and then it installs the extension. And now if we go back to Studio, we can see here that the extension for Microsoft Remote Desktop and Apps was successfully installed, and we need to restart our remote desktop in order for the changes to take effect. Now, we could also have gone into the Home tab here and into the Tools page and selected the UiPath extensions, and then we could have selected to install the Microsoft Remote Desktop and Apps extension here. Now we can see it is installed, so now we can uninstall it. The same goes for Citrix and for VMware Horizon 
uh, extensions that do essentially the same things except towards well a Citrix desktop and a VMware machine. So we'll just go back and we'll then jump into the remote machine and here we'll actually go on to the UiPath website because here we need to install the remote runtime. So we go to our cloud platform And once we get into the Automation Cloud, we'll go to the Resource Center. And we can see that there are some featured downloads, and we'll show all of the downloads. And then we can scroll down to the Remote Runtime Installer. Once we get to that, we need to make sure that we get the correct version. And for me, that's the latest version. In fact, I've cheated a little bit, so I'll just close the browser and go to my Downloads folder here. And we can see we have the UiPath Remote Runtime sitting here. And I'll install it accept and install and the remote runtime install has completed I'll click finish close this window and now I'll need to restart this machine so I'll do that and get back to you once we've rebooted Okay, so the machine has rebooted. We've reconnected to it using remote desktop. And now if we start calculator on this machine, go back to our studio machine, drag in a click activity to our canvas, and then select indicator on screen. Now we should be able to, and you can see we are, uh, create selectors on the remote desktop, just as if it was on a local machine. So now that I clicked the three button, we can see that that selector was created just as it would be normally. Now, one thing you do need to be aware of is the versioning between the remote runtime and the UI activities that you're using inside of Studio. If you recall when we had the browser window open and we were selecting which version to, to download, I selected this one, the top one, and that is compatible with UI automation activities 21.10.5. That means that inside of my Studio, I need to make sure when I am in the package manager that the package that is uh, loaded inside of this project is the UiPath UI Automation Activities version 21.10.5. If I was using the latest version 22.4.4 here and updated it and all of that, the remote extension on my development machine would not be able to communicate with the remote runtime on the application machine. So make sure those versions are in sync, otherwise this won't work. Now, one more thing before we go. If you wonder, okay, what about this application that we installed on our remote uh, desktop machine? Is this just running all the time? Is it a service or what is it? It's actually just an application. And if we go into the task scheduler on the remote desktop machine, We can see here near the top of the list that there's a task called Launch UiPath Remote Runtime, and that runs at the logon of any user. So if we go into the Task Manager, we can see here that we actually have this UiPath Remote Runtime running as an application or as a process. So that's how the inner workings of this is put together. So I hope this gave you an insight into how you can get this working. Uh, try it out, play with it, and if you like it, and if it works, uh, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. It really does help my channel. Also, please subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, as I said in the beginning, make sure you leave a comment in the comments below. So that's it for this time. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe and take care.